Okay. Um, a big week for us. Uh, really excited um, to see how we react after a tough weekend. Even though we won last Friday against Washington, we didn't play our best basketball. We didn't end well. And I think that we played really poorly against Washington State. So, um, you know, in the past, we've had some really good reactions and bounce backs after losses. So um, it's, it's real. It's go time. The last eight games of the season are very hard. We're at that midway point, and we need to win some games. So excited to see what this weekend holds. Yeah, not like this. Um, I knew they'd be good, but you just don't ever know what to expect when there's so many transfers. Um, but they're playing really well. I am shocked that they're not in the top 25 with some of the wins that they've had. I think they definitely deserve it. Um, but I don't vote and I don't do all that. But um, they're a good team. I think it's going to be a very hard game. I think UCLA and USC in LA is that's a tough road trip. And you know a lot. And you could see from the results of a couple of weeks ago how the road trips are in the mountains. That Utah, Colorado, that's another tough road trip. So we always talk about that. That's why we want Arizona to be a tough road trip like that. Um, so, yeah, tough team. And not getting them back here in Tucson, how difficult is that when they're so good? Yeah, really difficult, I think, for just so many things. Um, you know, I, l I wish I was one of the people that voted for 20 games and voted to play everybody twice. Um, you know, half of our league did. And that's one of the reasons I think those are important games. And typically, a lot of us win at home. So um, definitely games you want. Um, you know, even though sometimes when you play certain teams, you're like, oh, Stanford twice, you know, but it's like it, it still helps, I think, in the scheme of things. So um, definitely would wish we would have had a chance to play them here in Tucson. Yeah, obviously, when, when the tape came in, your program was at a different place. For sure. You were able to come in and kind of play 26 minutes right mm -hmm. away versus the two McDonald's All-Americans you have this year who have struggled a little bit more to get on the court compared to yeah. Absolutely. I think people um, don't have, they make, you know, um, opinions based off of very little information, if any. And I think it's easy to see someone's accolades and say they deserve to play. But I think the reality is in most top programs, the freshmen aren't as good as a fifth year senior or they're not as good as a seasoned vet. And that's just how it is. I think, um, you know, when you're, when you're coming to a top team, there's very few freshmen in the country that play over 10, 15 minutes. Um, but if you go to now, like how we're, how we were when Kate first got here, we're like 300 in RPI at that time. Um, you're gonna and we uh, my second year won six games, so you're gonna play a lot. I think it's it's a different stage of the program. Um, and if you look at teams like UConn and um, some of the top, South Carolina freshmen aren't going in. McDonald's All Americans are not playing 20 minutes. I think Stanford has like 12 or 15. They have a lot, a lot of All Americans, and the number one high school kid is playing limited minutes. And I think there's a learning curve, it's different, it's faster, more athletic. So you, there's a process. And I think with the transfer portal, um, this process is skewed and it just causes more jump and movement. So I think you'll see a lot of top kids. They should probably do some kind of study, which they probably do. All the McDonald's All-Americans that go to top 10, 20 programs, how, how many of them stay in the programs? I'd be curious to see that. Because I think it's gonna be less and less. I, I think that players nowadays want immediate gratification. They don't want to go through the process, and they don't have the patience to. And I think too many people are around them to giving them bad information because they don't understand what goes into this every day. And, and you've talked about that a number of times this year, in particular to today's player, mm -hmm. and selfish and title, helicopter parents. Mm -hmm. Do you think those statements could eventually hurt you on the recruiting trail if players do say those things and they like pat themselves that they want to come play for a coach? It doesn't necessarily have a high view of today's athletes. Yeah, no, I have a high view of the athletes, but I think that there's a reality and there's like um, there's like a there's a truth and there's what's not the truth. I think that players will still still come. We're still getting great players because I think they'd rather have someone tell the truth than me say one thing recruiting you and say something different when you come. I think um, I think as a coach, your job is to put the best team together and put your best starting five to win. And I think that um, you know, as players get better and improve, you can contribute to, contribute to that because we're going to put the best players that you can to win. Now, there's a process to experience and learning, and there's a learning curve, and there's that process. Like a, a great example of that is Kaylin. 
Like I, I don't have anything against freshmen. If a freshman was coming in, earning it and deserves to play over someone else, they will. But I think there's just experience. There's a lot of factors that I think a lot of people don't understand. It could be running plays. It could be understanding. It's not all about scoring. You can come in and score. If you come in and score 15 and you give up 20, you're negative five. But I think as a fan and other people, they just see scoring. They don't see the times where you didn't rotate that led to a basket. They don't see all those things. And it's normal as a freshman in a new system, you're going to make those mistakes. It's normal for us that transfers are going to make those mistakes. I'm feeling that now. Um, sometimes when I'm really critical, I'm like, wow, well, that team, when we played really great defense, we were together for a couple years. We weren't together for one year, Ari, TT, Dominique were out, learning our whole system, practicing every day, and then together. And we, it took years to build that chemistry and cohesiveness. And I think I have to remember sometimes there's seven new players, four freshmen, three transfers that are, it's all new. And they're all from very different defensive systems. So I think with that being said, I give myself some grace for that because if you keep Jade, Lauren, as Mary another year, they're going to be better next year. It's just the time. I think things take time, and you don't do all that stuff and learn everything in 20 hours and in eight hours, four hours on the court in the off season. So I think it. I think things take time and and buy in, and I think it takes. It's 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 a process. Like our teams always got better in January and February. We're kind of not there yet. It's taken us a little bit longer this year, but there's also seven new players. There isn't two. Before we had the core, and we would add a couple players. Um, so, you know, we have to get better. And I think that my goals are, I love our freshmen. Um, I think Lamaya has a tremendous amount of potential to be great in our program. I think she's a long athlete that is working. And I think she, in the future, in a couple of years, she can be very good and be an impact player here. Um, Paris too. Paris, um, you know, it's hard sometimes when you have another freshman comes in, like Kaylin came in and played great. Maddie was playing great. So it was hard to find times. I wanted to play Paris. It's hard to put two freshmen on the wings together. Just because of experience in these high-pressure Pac-12 games that we're trying to win that have implications for the tournament and a lot of other things. So you have to find time. But it, do I think the Paris will have tremendous opportunity next year? Absolutely. We're losing five, five people, and we're losing um, four starters. So she will have a chance to come in and be an impact player. Kaylin, I, I think Kaylin's proven she can score. She's getting better defensively. She's playing a little faster, doing the things we want. And, and she works at it. She's going to get better and have more opportunities next year. And Maya, Maya um, is a very good player. I think at times um, freshmen lose confidence sometimes, which is normal when you're not playing as much. You're getting a couple minutes. You have a shorter leash. You are going to struggle with confidence, but that's a part of the process too. You have to learn through, how to play through adversity. You're coming as a McDonald's All-American from high school that played every single game on every AU team. You played 30 some minutes. You took all the shots. It's different. It's a different role. So that time takes that that stuff takes time. And that process is what I talk about a lot, and I'm hoping that they all stick with the process and get better and stick with it and, and see the opportunity next year. And the example I always give is that Nettie last year played behind, we had seven post players last year. Um, Nettie that's at Colorado played behind some fifth years, some more experienced, played behind a couple all-conference players, didn't have a lot of minutes. But this year, she would have played a lot. It's just kind of the way it goes, but I think um, young players don't have the patience and that's okay, and that is what it is, because at the end of the day, I just have to do what I need to do to build a team. And um, if you want to stick it out and get better, you stay. If you don't, you go somewhere else where you're more happy. And I'm okay with that. And I, I'm, there's going to be about 1,200 kids in the portal at the end of the year. Now, I ideally don't want to build off the portal every year, but I think that's the way basketball is going. You're going to keep your – unless you're Stanford, because no one transfers from Stanford. because <laughs> It's rare, because you want to keep that, and your parents won't let you. Uh, but, it's, but everywhere else, you're going to lose kids. I mean, it's like – um, but I'm hoping we don't because I think you win long term with the core and you add some pieces out of the portal. Um, but then, like, is the formula what USC is doing the right thing? Who knows? USC has a whole new team and they're winning. So what's the right formula? I think for me, the right formula would be keeping our freshmen, building them, um, because I really – culture is really important to me. But if I can't, then you have to do what you need to do to sustain your program and have success, right? Um, it's, it's a process. I think there is no quick fix. I think, um, I think I'm learning that if someone really has a desire to do the things and learn them, they're going to do it. 
I think a perfect example of that, but this was a more mature example, so it's different than a freshman. We're talking comparing like a 17-year-old to a transfer. So the example I'll give is Trinity Baptist. She could not spell defense when she was at Virginia Tech. She did not guard on film. I was like, oh my gosh, like she's awful defensively. But she was one of the hardest workers I've ever known. She was determined to play defense. She became one of our best defensive players in months, but she studied it. She worked every day. She did extra work. Players don't do that. They don't want to go work on defense. They want to go and take shots because sh shooting's fun. Scoring's fun. You get all the stuff. No one wants to do the hard stuff. And so Trinity was one of those players that did it. And like, I mean, she's one of my favorites. She worked and she got better and she studied and she became great. She became solid. Without her, we don't go to the Final Four as one of our role players. So um, I think that if you have the, the desire and the want, and that takes maturity, that takes learning the process, understanding the process, that takes patience, um, it takes a lot. And that's hard for a 17-year-old. Um, it's very hard. But I think that also the understanding of it's not always greener, it's the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Because a lot of people, they transfer, and then you realize, I shouldn't have transferred or it shouldn't because it's, it's not always, if you're going to a good team, you're going to have the same thing in every good team. So if you're going to stay at the same level, you're going to have people in front of you that are better. And that's what we're supposed to do. I'm supposed to build a team where the freshmen have to earn time and get better. If not, we're not good. And right at, at South Carolina, you're going to, if you're a post player that came in the last couple of years, you're going to play behind Aaliyah Boston. And that's the facts. You're going to get better from her every day and you're going to get your butt kicked every day by her. And then the next year, you're going to be kicking everybody's butt because you just went against Aaliyah Boston for two years and got your butt kicked. But you're probably going to be great as a junior. And the same thing, Ari. Ari did that to Shayna. Ari kicked Shayna's butt a lot. They went at it every day, and Shayna made Ari better. And then she became a better player because you have that competition daily. So it's the wild, wild west now. <laughs> so today is National Women's Day. I know. It means so much. Um, celebrate women. I think that, um, you know, I read some stuff about Title IX that was interesting. Like, it, it's funny. I read this quote, um, I think in Women's and Sports on Instagram, and it said something like, every woman has like a Title IX story and usually doesn't even know it. And that's so true. I think there's so many things like growing up and playing college basketball I was oblivious to because I was happy with what we had and didn't even understand that. Um, but I think there's so much, um, uh, so many more things to accomplish and do to make things equal. But I think it's great to celebrate women. And I think we need more, need to do more to keep women involved and young girls. I think there needs to be more programs for young women and stuff like that. So I'm trying to create some of that in Tucson, trying to help elevate the game um, for young women. So I have a girl power day. So I think that I'm trying to go, because COVID kind of stalled some things. So I want to do the best I can to create opportunities for women and young women to be better and to have uh, resources. And um, so I'm doing my part to make it better and impact what I can. And you talked a few weeks ago about you know, your relationship with Dave Rubio. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we talked a little. We're supposed to sit down and talk, but we're friends, so we talk a lot. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for Rita. I did not know that was going to happen so fast, but um, we had our first head coaches meeting today, and she was in there, so we welcomed her, and I'm just excited for her. I think she's going to do great. I think she knows that she knows um, Arizona. She played here. We actually played together. She's a little bit older than me, but um, we were around the same time, and she's been successful. She was Dave's right-hand person, and I think she's going to do really well. Um, so I'm excited to watch her, um, you know, go through the process, and I'm going to help her along the way. Just help her with, I don't know how much I can help her, but just with, with my experience, what I did, and, um, yeah, so we're, we definitely talk a lot. Not the one you're back here, no, no, we're not going to talk about that. I'm going to be like, Rita, we're friends, stay away. <laughs> this is all good, but this is off limits. You're not taking Lauren because Lauren's going to be a great impact player for us. I'm just going to talk her into, well, if you have Lauren we have Lauren, we both only have a half of Lauren, so we, we, we have to be selfish. Like, we need to keep Lauren. And Lauren actually is doing phenomenal. Um, I'm really excited. You know, and that's one of the things people don't realize. We lost one of our starters, like our starting post player, um, our best defender, um, one of our smartest players, our best communicator by far. That was a big loss. I knew it was going to be a big loss, but I didn't realize it till things unfolded, like how big it was. So sometimes I sit next to her like, how many, more, how many more weeks do you have until you can play? And she's practicing like a little bit limited right now. 
But um, with her, we would have been a lot better this year. I mean, it's always like how it is, but. How much of an impact does it have on Kate to not have Lauren? I think it has a, a big impact. Lauren's size and her shot blocking ability, her just um, communication, and she could switch one through four. I think it really, it affects Kate um, just with communication, chemistry. They're really close, so they had great chemistry together. Um, you know, Lauren stepped up big when Kate got hurt. So I think that they just were very familiar. And they're like best friends off the courts, roommates. So I, th I think it affected Kate a lot. And I even think the loss of Sam Thomas affected Kate a lot. Because that, this this, that's what we talk about the core. So you think about that core. You know, Kate's been here years. And then you had um, Sam Thomas. Like, players that have that chemistry together, that know each other. I think that just that pays um, off big time when you play for offense, for defense, all those things. And it's, it's the little things that really matter. I mean, when people come in new, you're learning everything. And they came from a new system, different habits. Like, you're getting to know someone different. I think that just all takes time. And so that's why you don't want to lose all your freshmen every year. And I think and on top of, like, the fact that you're recruiting. Like, I recruited Maya since eighth grade. So it's years of work, relationship with her family, her. You don't want to, it's hard to throw all that away. And I think it's like people think that like coaches don't care about losing players. Yes, you care a lot. Like, you know, Paris, like I love Paris, her family. Like I have big plans for her for the future. Like Lamaya, it's a process. So you spend time, relationship, you care about kids. And in the portal, the process is really like quick, not good or bad. Sometimes that's good because in and out, you know. But other than that, it's like you don't, you usually haven't recruited them for years unless like you know them from before. But like it's just different, so. And how has Lauren helped the post this year? Because I know she's, we see her all the time. And yeah. I'm under the impression she's at practice. She's with yeah. you guys all the time. So does she, you know, pull on my side and tell her a few things because she's that type of a player. Yeah, she's um, really vocal on the sidelines. She's encouraging. Um, she communicates even on the sideline, probably better than some of the players, just because that's her. I think that's from volleyball. I think volleyball, they like over communicate, which is great. I think they cheer for everything. Like you can get hit in the face of the ball, they cheer. Like it's just different, you know, like they cheer all the time. Like basketball is such a different culture. Like I think it's just so different, which that's what I love. I love that aspect she brings to us. Um, on the sideline, she's positive. She's coaching them on the sideline, not overstepping ever, but being like a helping hand and like, saying stuff quietly, or she's vocally saying, come line up over here. I think she's doing a great job. She's really important for us. And I just, I have, you know, she looks great in her workout. She's so ahead. So I'm excited to get her back. Like I really am. And I'm excited she's not playing volleyball. And we had a Sam thing last week. Yeah. Yeah. That devastating. Um, I couldn't imagine. I, I actually spoke with Augie this morning, and it's it's really hard. I think it's, uh, you know, Dave had a really good point today. It's like we had our head coaches meeting, and um, this is tragic. Like for the family, there's so much of a process, and it's a former student athlete. So I think sometimes that's even um, a harder area because when you a current student athlete has all the support is here. I think uh, student athletes that are in transition that just graduated are training here. They're still really involved in your program and you have relationships, but it's so different. There's just so many other things you have to go through. And um, so just making sure there's support in every way for those athletes that are in a transition. Because think about all the things we do for student athletes. You do all these things, they graduate, and they're kind of in limbo. Some are trying to pursue like professional um, you know, dreams. and. I think it's just in limbo, and I, he was very close, and it was a huge impact here at Arizona through SAC and different organizations. So um, it's just devastating. And as a mom, I, I couldn't imagine getting that phone call, and just really, really sad. I'm really sad. And how do you talk to your players about something like um, First, you give everybody a hug. <laughs> you know, because you never know. Like, you don't know what life has in store, and I think you never think this can happen to an athlete. Athletes, they all think they're oblivious to everything. And I think that, uh, or they, they don't think it'll ever happen to them. And I, things happen, life happens, and there's a lot bigger things than swimming or basketball. Um, and I, you just talk about the support, because it affects you. Even if you weren't directly friends with someone, it's still in your community. It's still another athlete that's like, and swimmers are super fit. And like, you don't think that's gonna happen. 
And I think we're seeing that more and more the last 10 years, just random stuff happening. And so I think um, just making sure that they're supported and you're talking about it. It's not like you don't talk about it. You're, you're talking about it and saying, hey, you know, here's where your support is. And I think it's important because it, things affect people different ways and a lot of people don't show how it affects them. So, you know, even like Sam Thomas, you know, the relationship with them. So you're checking, as a coach, you're checking on your former players and um, you're just making sure you're there. So. He thinks, guys.